What's the schedule? Nine, uh, nine o'clock. Jevin Jokes versus Hertz. Uh, two two W three four one four. Come on up to the podium, sir. Your name? J. Bond Jokes. I'm not understanding your claim here. Okay, so. It says Hertz took money from me instead of taking the price of the down payment, threatened to repossess car if not returned. Yes, Your Honor. Um, Hertz, back at the time, Hertz was doing a program, a rent to buy uh, program. And um, I had did I had purchased a car, was in the process of purchasing a car. Um, I tried to proceed with the uh, situation, with the matter. Uh, they asked me for a co-signer. I couldn't find one. So I told them, like, how much would the down payment be? If I didn't have a co-signer, they told me $6,500. Um, I asked them, where do I pay the $6,500? Who, where and who do I pay the $6,500 to? Um, and once again, he had... Who's got the car? Hertz has the car. They repossessed it? No, they didn't. I returned it. Uh, I returned it. They had, after I asked them, who do I send the uh, $6,500 to? They never really gave me a correspondence. The next correspondence from them was either a call... I think it was, I believe it was a call saying that if I didn't return the car, they was going to repossess it. I didn't want a repossession on my record. What I, kind of a car is this? It was a 2019 uh, Chrysler 300. So you, you, this is like a rent to own? It was a rent to own. I was with the rent, the option to buy. I wanted to buy the car. When, when did you buy it? Or rent it as you This will. was back in 2019, uh, 2020. And what were the terms of that? Do you have the terms of the agreement? Um, I don't recall. I don't have it. Um, I've been like, I've been going through a lot of moving in the paper, the papers probably, I think I left the papers in the car when I returned it. The papers were in the car. But I, re I uh, emailed you. Let's slow down. Let's slow down. What were the terms? I need to know the terms. I, I really should have the agreement, but I, I need to. Yeah, it's um, I sent you an email. It should be up in there. It was like a rent to buy. If I want, uh, I got the car. If I liked it, I wanted. To, uh, I had the option to buy. I was going to buy. Um, Hearst ended up going through had a, a bankruptcy issue. They were going through a bankruptcy issue, and then they tried to expedite. Which were you supposed to? Okay, let's talk about this. Sure. Yes, Your Honor. Initially, you were going to rent it for a certain period with an option to buy. Is that it? Yeah, you're under the rent. The, the uh, as per the policy, the, the rent the rental was only like supposed to be like two or three days. I, I already had it on my mind to purchase. It was never. It was. I mean, the the program was rent to buy. Um, I wanted to buy it. I Let's wanted to buy the vehicle. You get the you get this car, this Chrysler three three hundred, right? Yes, your honor. And this was in 2019, right? Yes, Your Honor. And how long did you actually possess the car? About six, about. At least three months. And then they had like a legal Slow issue. Down. So then what happened after three months? I was trying to, uh, well, um, it was only supposed to have been rented for like three days. <laughs> and uh, after the three, third How day. How much did you pay to rent it for three months? Um, I, the initial payment was 500. They took like 500 from me in the beginning. As so a, it was $500. That was, that, was for the, that was for the rental. That was the renting portion. And they said if I wanted to continue, I needed a cosigner or a down payment. And so when I tried to give them the a down signer to buy or a co to, buy. to lease to buy rent with the rent to buy. And you couldn't find a co -signer. I didn't have a co signer, Your Honor. So I wanted to pay the down payment myself. But you never bought it. You never gave them sixty five hundred, did you? They never they never took they never contacted me with, as to where or who to give it to. I'm not sure. How do you have damages here? You you lease the car. I you never don't have the car. Why are you suing them for sixty five hundred dollars? I'm shocked they're not here. Because when I because they were wrong. Uh, when I rented, I said I was trying to purchase. It was never really a rental. I never had intentions to rent it. I wanted to buy it. The sixty five hundred was supposed to have been for the down payment. They never told me who to pay the sixty five hundred to. The next correspondence after I sent them the email of where I send the money to, they never responded. Is the still open? I believe so. They were closed for a minute, but now they're back open. 
yeah, they were going, they was going, but they were bankrupt. They went bankrupt. I, I, I didn't know nothing about that. I'm trying to figure out how you're entitled to $6,500. From- I was intending on purchasing the car, Your Honor. I was asking them to get where, who to give the $6,500 to. You no, know, but how does that entitle you to $6,500? Say again, they took money from me. They took it as a rent. $500. They took $5,000. They took five. You, I never got the finish. You've been telling me to slow it down. I'm sorry. Okay. I apologize. It's okay. Go ahead. Yeah. So like after they told me to rent to, after they told me to return the car or it's going to get repossessed, I returned the car to my uh, local Hertz. And after uh, days after that, they sent me a receipt saying I owed them like 5,800, 5,800 or something like that. And then I tried to reach out to them and ask them like, why did they take that when I asked them where to pay the 6,500 too? And they never responded back because I wanted the vehicle. Pay them five thousand. They took it. They took it from me. What do you mean they took it from you? They took it out of the account. The payment that I put the five hundred dollars down on, they took that money from that account, and they made that account negative. They took fifty five hundred five thousand dollars out of some account, out of a checking account, out of my credit card account. Yes, yes, your honor. Why did you wait so long to sue them? This is 2000. Tra- Your Honor, it's not me. I've been trying to get in contact with Hertz, Your Honor. I stay in Saginaw, Michigan. I was trying to put this case in there, but. All right, let's I- slow down one second now. I want to make sure I understand. Yes. So in 2019, you get a Chrysler 300, you give them $500, right? Yes. Initially. Yes, Your Honor. They're telling you, yeah, you can buy it, but you have to put $6,500 down. Or a cosigner. Or have a cosigner. I didn't find a cosigner. You didn't find a cosigner. So then you turn the car back, right? Due to them not telling me who to get them uh, $6,500 to, and they threatened me with a uh, repossession, yes, I returned the car. And then they took $5,000, you're telling me, out of your account? Yes, Your Honor. Was that before or after you turned the car over? After I turned the car over. And they tried to say it was, uh, they they took it because of, for the rental fee. And I told him I never intended on renting it in the first place. It was a contract to rent to buy. I was trying to purchase. And I know, but does the rent to buy, so to speak, agreement not have something about telling you at that point that you needed to have a um, a co-signer or else you needed to pay that money up front? No, nothing up front. After with after the option, once I made the purchase, the option to buy, I was supposed to uh got a cosigner and a down payment. I tried to pay the down payment. They never contacted me about the where who or where to send the down payment to. I saw I got I got emails of me trying to ask. I, I reached out to them. I called them. They never read the, the the only the only correspondence I got after that was I need to return the car or they was going to repossess it. They never told me All nothing. Right, so let's slow down one more second. I'm going to ask you to raise your right hand. You soundly swear affirm under penalties of perjury that the testimony you will give in these proceedings will be the whole true self you've got. I do. So, so how much are you out of pocket? You, five hundred plus the five thousand, right? Fifty. I'm out. Of, I'm out of over, over more than sixty five uh, hundred due to like access fees and interest because I I didn't uh, pay, I paid like about twenty five to three grand of that money back, but I stopped because I felt it wasn't my place to do it. And right now it's still like it's still negative. Like it like due to interest is back up to like 3800 3, You know what? Look, they didn't show up. I'm going to give you your judgment. Appreciate it. I mean, I don't know why they wouldn't show up. They were wrong. Pardon? They were wrong, Your Honor. Well, I don't care. They they still, this is a supposedly a reputable company. Right. 
Yeah, they had a sudden bankruptcy back around that time. They, they, yeah, I I invested in them on my uh, Robin Hood stock. And that yeah. stock got took off and everything. I don't have a filing fee in here, Linda. You got to write the filing fees in here, please. How much was this filing fee service fee, you know? You talking to me, Your Honor? No, I'm talking okay, to you. I'm sorry. How much was the amount, um, Your Honor? $6,500. It's nowhere on the file, though. I just don't see any. Um, it would be a total of $78. Sorry about that. That's okay. I'm going to go ahead and enter a judgment, $6,578. Now, you understand they can move the set this aside, but it's curious that somebody that's probably a half a mile from here didn't show up. The fall judgment centered in favor of plaintiff and against the defendant, 6,578. You can go down the hall. They'll give you a copy of the judgment form. I'd consult with a lawyer if I was you about how to go about collecting on that, okay? Thank you, Honor. Best of luck. Appreciate it. Well, thank you. This is your motion for summary disposition. Did you two talk? Did it we all? talk? No, Your Honor. Mr. Mone, are you still contesting this? Yes. You were supposed to file a response then, sir. Just not doing too good here on this. I don't know if you have the money or not, but you, you would prefer, I think, not to have a judgment on your record. You bought, you paid for an ambulance, whether the insurance company is responsible for it or not is not the issue. You think you have a claim against the insurance company? You should go after the insurance company. I don't know what more I can say about it. They're not a party to that contract with your insurance carrier. But if you want to go through with the motion, I don't have any issue. I'll listen to what you have to say, but this is not the hardest case I'm going to handle in the next two minutes, if you know what I'm saying. I tried to tell you this nicely, I think, last time. It's not between, they're not privy, they're, they don't have to rely on your insurance carrier to pay them. Okay, I'm I'm sorry, I was supposed to file a... That's all right, let's just go for it. Uh, counsel, go ahead and proceed with your motion. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Again, this is plaintiff's motion for summary disposition. This claim is for unpaid emergency services. The defendant filed an answer alleging insurance should have paid. Um, that is not a legal defense. The medical services, the emergency services were provided to the defendant and not to his insurance company. We did file documentation to support the charges claimed in our complaint. Uh, as the court pointed out, the defendant did not file his response pursuant to MCR 2.116 G4. He cannot rely on the allegations in his pleadings alone, and we're asking for judgment as a matter of law. Anything, sir? Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. I thought this was supposed to be for March 13th. I'm not this sure. This is a motion for say. summary disposition that they filed. Okay. It's a motion for entry of judgment. They're asking me to enter judgment as a matter of law, saying essentially that there's no genuine issue as to any material fact, Judge, and, and there's no evidence that can support the defendant's claim here. Okay. Well, I I filed a response when I first... You filed a response to their complaint, an answer to complaint. You did not file a motion, a response to their motion for summary disposition. I don't believe, I didn't receive it. It's not in the file. Okay. I'm not sure exactly what the the, the disposition, because I thought it, the non-jury trial was for Monday, March 13th. And then I got this notice uh, two it's weeks because, ago. Listen to me, listen. Sure. I, hate, I tell this story every four days. Maybe every eight days. I don't know. If you're going to be your own lawyer, you need to understand the rules. I told somebody two weeks ago, I said in my 28 plus years here, I think I've seen two individuals represent themselves slightly adequately, slightly adequately. I mean, there's nothing I can do. And you don't have a claim here. You don't have a defense here. 
you don't have a defense. I mean, you, you just don't have a defense. Okay, well, I, I don't know what. If, may I? I guess I'm. I'm really confused at what's going on here today because well, I, I thought the non-trial jury you should was be confused. 13. I would be confused if I tried to give myself a heart bypass, right? I mean, I I tried to tell you this nicely. You should be confused. You're not a lawyer, but they sent you a motion for summary disposition. It was scheduled for today. You should have received it on or about February sixth. Okay. So in my initial response, the 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 issue is you didn't really give them 21 days though, counsel, did you? Yes, Your Honor. Uh the motion for summary disposition was mailed on February 1st. Okay. All right. The proof of service states that. Okay. Go ahead, I, Mr. I, Moni. I received this. I'll let you respond eight. in any form or fashion that you want, as long as it's respectful. Okay. So even though you didn't file a brief, you didn't file a responsive brief, I'll let you say whatever you'd like to yeah. say. I, I apologize, but there's nothing on here saying I needed to file anything. I just, it was, I was supposed to be here today at 10, 15 for, I, I wasn't well, sure what was going on today. Does it say that? It's this motion for summary disposition. We, okay. okay. But I, I, I was unaware that Mr. I was going Mr. Money, you anything. can tell me whatever you'd like to say, sir. You have no defense here. You're not going to win this case unless somebody comes in and sits in my position that has absolutely no idea what they're doing. I'm, I'm sorry. You can't get, we don't get free ambulance services. I know, I'm sure it's a lot. I, I understand that, sir, and I'm not expecting free ambulance service. What I was expecting was my insurance to be billed, which was I tried to explain to you last time, that's between you and your insurer. Right. And I, I don't know. I, I did my best to get that cleared up. But for some reason, everybody tried to bill Medicaid, which I've never had Medicaid, and I made that clear to them. I submitted my insurance paperwork to everybody involved. Is your did you submit it to your insurance carrier? What are they telling you? I haven't heard they they were never billed. Well, that's, you could have sent them the point. bill. Did you send them the bill? I sent the bill when I first got the bill from Acumed, and I submitted I mean, my my insurance information. Then I heard from Arbor Professional Solutions, and I submitted my. Uh, insurance information. And twice they were trying to bill the wrong insurance company. And I, it's not them, years, it's you. Me. Send the bill to your insurance carrier, walk it over to them, put it in their hands, say you owe me this money if you think they do. I mean, you're, you're blaming them. I don't want to get ornery here with you, but I just don't think you're getting it that your contract is with your insurance carrier. They don't have a contract with your insurance carrier. This is not a close call. You told me the same thing, I think, at the time of the pretrial. Did you not? Did you not tell me the same thing my insurance company should pay? And did I not tell you if I did? Maybe I'm confusing this with another case. Did I not tell you the very same thing I'm telling you now? They don't have a contract with your insurance carrier. You do. It's your responsibility to pay the bill and you can seek reimbursement from your insurance carrier. But you're continuing to go back about what they did wrong and who they billed wrong and I'm not seeing it. Well, I, I apologize about that, Your no, Honor. No, I don't want I, you to apologize. What I'd like you to do is if you truly believe that your insurance carrier owes this and i don't know whether they do or not i don't know who what insurance company you have i don't know what your policy says if you truly think they did send it to them talk to them if they tell them we don't you can make a determination you can consider suing them but that doesn't insulate you from the debt versus this plane 
That's between you and them. This happens all the time. Somebody goes in to a hospital, the insurance company doesn't pay everything, at least that some people think they should pay. And then the, the, the patient cannot come in and say, hey, they have to go after Blue Cross or whatever my insurance carrier's name is. It just doesn't work that way. Ms. Baker, do you yeah. know anything about where they sent this bill? Uh, no, Your Honor. How old are you, sir? 51. I can't imagine them sending it to Medicaid or Medicare. Are you employed, right? Yes. I don't know why you would have Medicaid. And you're no, certainly not old I've enough to have Medicare. Medicare. Like I said, I've never had Medicaid, but I heard that's what Acumed told me. And that's what our professional services told me. And I, okay. So. I, I still would take the bill and go to your insurance carrier, but don't just send it to them, email it to them, fax it to them, deliver it to them, do whatever you have to do. Am I right, counsel? Correct me. I don't have a lot of these ambulance bills. Typically, ambulance bills are not covered by insurance, are they? Uh, to the best of my knowledge, that's accurate, Your Honor. So typically, they're not, but I'm not going to sit here without looking at your policy and tell you that that's not covered by insurance. Uh, my experience, it's not covered by insurance, but that doesn't mean that your policy isn't going to cover this, but you need to get it to them. You need to get a live person on the phone. You need to speak with them. And if they don't convince you that this is, that this is not covered, then feel free to initiate a lawsuit against them. But it's, again, I can't explain, express enough how this is not the plaintiff's problem because they're not the contracting party with your insurance carrier. They contracted, their client contracted with you. Plaintiff's lawyer's client contracted with you. They're not contracting with insurance, your insurance carrier. So I, I don't know what else to tell you, but I hate to have you have a judgment against you here. That's why I'm a bit frustrated. It should never have come to this point. I completely agree with you, Your Honor. Well, you agree with, with me, but policy, you don't agree with my reasoning, apparently, because I tried to tell you this at the time of the pretrial. And now they filed a motion and you didn't respond and you're saying the same things you said at the time of the pretrial and they're not going to carry any weight. Can you pay this where they can execute a dismissal and... Or would you want you want me to just enter the judgment? It's entirely up to you. Now you've got extra money on here. You, they got a f filing fee of forty five, motion fee of twenty, service fee of fifty five seventy four, a statutory attorney fee of seventy five. So they're asking me to enter a judgment today in the amount of eight ninety three seventy four. Well, I I cannot pay that today. I mean, there's just nothing I can do. I can set up a payment plan for you if you'd like. But I mean, they're entitled to judgment. There's no genuine issue as to any material fact. I'm entering judgment in that amount of 893.74, consisting of 6698, the principal sum, 45 5574 service, 75 attorney fee, $20 motion fee bringing your total to 893.74. So I'm sorry, I'm gonna to have to grant that motion uh, for summary disposition. I'm gonna enter that. And the only thing I can tell you is you can consider going back to Blue Cross or your insurance carrier saying, here's the judgment, you should pay this. If they don't, you, you're convinced that, they, that it's covered, then you can initiate a lawsuit against them. Do you want me to set up a payment plan for you? I'll be more than happy to do that. Yeah, please. 
How much, how much, uh, I'm going to swear you in here, raise your right hand, sir. Do you soundly swear or affirm under penalties of perjury, the testimony you'll give in these proceedings will be the whole true self you got? Yes, I do. Where, where do you work at and how much do you make? I work at uh, Kitty Campus Child Development Center. And how much do you make there? About 500 a week. Can you tell me? I'll be happy to work with you if you tell me how much you think you can afford weekly, bi-weekly, whatever the case may be. I'd say probably 250 bi-weekly. I'll tell you what, I don't, I'm not even going to order that if you only do you have a wife or kids or anything. I have two kids. How old are they? 17 and seven. I'm going to let you pay this in installments of $75 bi-weekly starting March the 10th. Okay. And again, you know, do what I'm telling you on the insurance, but I don't know that it's going to be covered. So $75, as long as you stay with that, they cannot garnish wages. They still could garnish bank accounts and tax returns. But honestly, I think if you pay the 75 bi-weekly, starting on March the 10th, I don't think you're going to have a problem. Mark, is he counsel? Uh, no, you're on. That's fine. And the payments do need to come to our office, Mr. Money. So you're going to have to send them to their office, made payable to... Who township of Grove Steel. Make make it pump payable to Township of Grove Steel. Put the case number in the bottom left hand corner, and you're going to send it to the law firm's address. And they should be received by the on the tenth or mailed by the tenth. Yeah, and that has to be received by the tenth. Okay. <laughs> Okay. I wish you well, sir. I really do. Good luck to you. First choice versus Kenneth and Lynette Gupton. 2B2037. Good morning, Your Honor. May I please this honorable court? Matthew Pallets on behalf of the plaintiff. Ms. Gupton is present via Zoom. Ms. I Gup Ms. G Ms. Gupton, start your video. There you go. Is uh, Kenneth Gupton here? That's what I'm aware of. All right, so Kenneth is not here. <clears throat> so if I may briefly proceed, Your Honor. Yeah, they have they have just so you know, uh, she submitted, and I know you're aware of this, but for the record, she submitted a motion um to set aside the fault, and I just indicated I was setting it for hearing at 8.30 in the morning this morning and indicated there'd be no post-judgment collection proceedings until court decides motion to set aside default judgment. In the meantime, I've also received a, a response from your office, plaintiff's response to defendant's motion to set aside default. And I also received a, a document from the <clears throat> defendant additional support for motion to set aside default judgment. Did you get an opportunity to review that, Mr. Pallets? It was received not, here on Friday. I'm, I'm not sure if we received the additional document from her. I, I do know that we had received her motion, at which point we had prepared a response for Your Honor. Uh, Your Honor, and, and well, well, let me let me just quickly tell you what she's saying here. I'm working sure. on obtaining a lawyer. I'm going to highlight this. It's about three, four pages long. I'm working on obtaining a lawyer. The past due amount is small. The process would destroy my children and myself. Uh, quick look at the file shows they're not able to serve me for whatever reason. I was never served or I would have replied. I did not reply because I never received a claim and delivery complaint. This is a mobile home park, so maybe they didn't know how to serve me properly. I never got the, the case is what she said. My, the bills is for something like a past due bill amount of 2,500 where they know I would pay that bill to keep the home. I've invested many thousands of dollars into the house and my children. This is an over, uh, 
Excuse me. Excuse me. This is an over $100,000 contract where a $10,000 down payment was made on the manufactured home with more than 10,000 being paid in monthly payments since 2019. I'd have paid the uh, balance due and owed if I was ever told of this fact that money was not paid. Uh, this is all because my soon to be ex-husband tried to sabotage us in order to win a custody case. I have three small children. Uh, let's see, contract suggest I deserve notice of default so I could fix this mess before I got to this point. Mobile Home Park is the primary party to this contract and a necessary third party because it was the park that structured the deal with its agents and the defendant. There's a rental lease agreement between all the parties. Uh, the motion to set aside default makes clear I was never served and was never told of the default or problem with the contract. Uh, then she goes on, cites the uh, uh, claim and delivery rules, says it seems like claim and delivery is improper for this matter. I stole, stole or took or nothing in this matter. The plaintiff does not assert anything was unlawfully taken or detained in its complaint. Rather, it suggests a default in a contract. Uh, I don't think claim and delivery action to evict is set forth in the contract. If I'm not a chance. I, I understand, Your Honor. If I may, so go ahead. So I, I and I did have an opportunity to speak to Ms. Gupton in in the breakout room for quite some time. Uh, first of all, a claim and delivery is perfectly appropriate, as you know, Your Honor. This is a, this is a mobile home at issue. We're representing the lien holder, not not the mobile home park. This has nothing to do with the lot rent contract that she would have entered into. I, I'm not unsympathetic to the contentious divorce that the two named defendants are are going through, and, and there's some issues that don't need to be broadcast on YouTube about them. Um, suffice to say, it sounds acrimonious. Um, I, I can't speak to whether or not Mr. Gupton uh, was purposely trying to mislead or, or withhold information from Ms. Gupton. She had explained to me that they had had an arrangement whereby she was paying a lot rent. He was supposed to be making the payments on the home. Clearly, this has not happened. She may have a remedy in her divorce proceedings with regard to that, but that's certainly something that my client's not in privity of since they're jointly and severally liable. Um, as far as her motion, um, we attempted to serve. We did a, a second summons. There was an alt serve on that. Um, it's been well documented by this court through this time. Um, I, I think our service is it was uh, proper, but regardless, even if you want to look at that in the light most favored to the tenant or or to the the defendant, um, there's no dispute that the monies have not paid. And as our response is clear, it's not a matter of 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 uh, twenty five hundred. It, it, it's a matter of over thirteen thousand. So the defendant said that she. And then there's no dispute to that if she intends to pay it. Again, I'm not unsympathetic. She's going through a divorce. There's some children involved, hard times. But nonetheless, my client has been paid since May of 2022, and the amount is over $13,000. So I don't hear a meritorious defense here. I, you know, that that's our position um, that um, the amount is owed. It's not disputed, and and we have a right to reclaim uh, the uh, uh, home back. That's that's what our position is. Ms. Gupton? Yes, I'm here. Well, do you have anything to say? You're, you're, you have a tough case here, ma'am. You owe $13,000. I know. Um, I, I was explaining. Um, I was never served. And the first time I heard about this was this Friday. Um, I was asking... What do you mean this Friday? You fill out your motion Past February, February 3rd, you filled out your motion. The, the judgment was mailed out, or at least the default was mailed out on or, before, on or about January the 9th. It I looks like to me. I received some sheriff and he uh, called me not this past Friday, but the Friday before, and before I came forth that day. Um, wait a minute, I'm, wait, whoa, whoa, wait, I'm losing you kind of, you gotta stay close to your device. What day was the judgment entered, counsel? 
Uh, let's see. Um, Judgment uh, was taken on January 25th. The default was entered prior to that on January 9th. Okay, I'm looking in here. Yes, I see it now. Go ahead, ma'am. The problem is you, you, you have to have a defense too. There was alternate serve. Listen to me, and I'm going to tell you what the problem is from your standpoint. They perfected, they, they at least convinced the court that an order for alternate service was appropriate. And I signed the order for alternate service. So as far as the court is concerned, you were served. I was never served in, um, about this matter. I was never served. I never received anything on my end. Um, I, I what is your defense, ma'am? Tell I me what your defense is. I am going through a divorce, and I'm not sure if my ex was um, being served to the bail, getting, allowing me to. Man, I got Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I got to get you closer here or something. I'm, I can't have every word, every other word cracking up. We got to pick up what you're, what you're saying here. Nice okay. and close to the device. Okay. What is your defense to the action? He's telling me you owe him over $13,000. And he said a payment has been made since May of 22. Is that true? I, um, it was It was to my understanding that my, can you hear me? I'm sorry, can you hear me? Yes, now I can. That's much better. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Um, it was to my understanding that my ex was paying on. I know, I know, but I, he wasn't. I know. And then I was going to be paying the lot rent and I never was served. I Me personally, I was never served. I know that my ex-husband does have the key to the mailbox, and I'm not sure if they were mailing it to, through the mail and he was getting it and not making me aware of what was happening, but I was never served personally, and I was asking the court to yeah, give me at least 30 days for discovery to figure out what happened and, and what's going on. Ma'am, listen, listen, listen. Do you have any proof that any payment was made since May of 22? To my understanding, that it has not been a payment made since May of 2022. That's that's what my so what, understanding. So I want to be clear about what his position is. He's saying there's no defense. They have no defense, Judge. They, you have to have a meritorious defense to set aside a default. And they the don't have a defense because, because they're $13,000 in arrears. And I was saying I was willing to pay the amount, ask for amount of eight hundred dollars as of now, and I get my taxes back in a, in a few couple of weeks, and I was going to pay the two thousand dollars to them, and I have signed up for um through Metro Wayne, um for their help and their assistance, and through also through DHS, so I was asking for um, thirty days of discovery so I can, you know, maybe get a lawyer, pay uh, some amounts down, um I'm just not trying to lose my kids in my home, so um. I'm willing to pay $800 today. And like I said, $2,000, as soon as my tax check come in, I already file my taxes. I have the amount I'm supposed to have coming back and I'm willing to give that to them. Um, and I'm trying to do whatever I can to make sure I keep my home because I don't want to lose my home or my kids. Your Honor, I, I don't um, doubt the sincerity of the tenant, um, but unfortunately, you know, it, it, there's, there's not a some certain there um, other than the eight hundred dollars, the time frame is also an extending time where there's even going to be more debt. Again, unfortunately, it, it sounds like this is you know really between her and her soon-to-be ex-husband through the divorce proceedings. But at, at this point, because of the balance continues to accrue, my, my client's entitled to their property back. If you want to give her some time to vacate. I'll defer to the court, but it doesn't sound like it's going to be tenable to maintain the premises. It, it Why will don't be you go, ma'am? Ma'am, sorry. Why didn't you go and hire a lawyer before today? You've at least known about this for two and a half or three weeks. I've known about it for a week. Um, um, well, you knew about it more than a week because you filed your motion on February third. We mailed out the default. I think I said on January the twenty, uh, the sixth. 
And I yes. think the judgment was entered on January the 23rd or 5th. I got it on Friday. That Friday, I filed the um, I filed the motion on that Monday, but I got it that Friday on that weekend, like towards the end of the day. That's when I first found out about it from the um, the, the sheriff that came and put something on my door and then gave me a call and told me to call him, and I did. And that's when I found out about all of this. And then I um, reached out. Do you have any idea how much equity you would have in this? Anybody? Can you tell me, counsel, do you have any idea how much ex equity? Your Honor, I, I do know that, I don't know the off the top of my head what the original amount of the contract was. I, I do know that the accelerated debt comes to over $93,000. So she had mentioned that it was, um, a hundred thousand, something like that. I, I can't imagine her equity is that she might even they might even be upside down at this point due to interest as accrued and the fact that there's such a arrearage. Um, you know, the, as I said, I, it I can't say if the co defendant was interfering with mail service to them or not, but I never there still is no meritorious defense at this point. I never received anything on this at all. Like myself, I never received anything on it. And like I said, I'm doing, I want to do whatever I can to get help and, and to pay, pay this off. Um, especially with me not knowing that this, this amount had accru accrued like this. Um, I'm willing to pay the escrow of $800 today. And then, like I said, give um, the $2,000 of what I've had for my refund and get help through Metro, the Metro Wayne and through DHS. Um, I just, Please, I really don't want to lose my home or my kids. I don't want you to lose it either. I just can't make up my own rules here. That's the problem. Can you give me like 30 days? Give me some time to... Um, Hang on one second. Council, do you have a copy of the uh, the proof of service? Uh, Your Honor, we attach those as exhibits to our motion, I believe. Or our response, I should say. So yeah, there's the verification of the process server as exhibit A. There was our post verification as exhibit B. We had our order of alternative service on exhibit C. The proof of service. See, he's is saying... He's Exhibit saying B. he sent it to you by first class mail, November 4th. And then it was tacked affixed to your door on November 6th. That's what I, that's what I was trying to explain to the court. I never received anything on my end. I never received anything. So I know that, like I said, I'm going through this divorce with my, um, my ex and he, he was going to the mailbox and I'm not sure if he was receiving things and not. Well, apparently he wasn't, he wasn't giving it to me. I never received anything on this. I it was in my, was he my hang on, hang on. Was he living with you on November 6th? I don't know when the divorce was. No, he wasn't living with me, but he come by, he, he came by my house a lot, especially to pick up my kids. And All right, to, slow down, slow down. Just answer my question. I'm sorry. Are you no, telling he, me you didn't, ma'am, listen to my question, please. Did, are you telling me that you did not have posted on your door a copy of this summons and complaint no i never received it i never received it I, like when i even with the tanglewood with the lot rent if i had to come to court i always answered and i've, I've been in front of you before i always made sure i answered whatever um was was given to me to come to court um so it wouldn't make any sense that i wouldn't come to this uh, this court date at all so i never received that that whatever was tacked onto my door i never received that are you working? Yeah. Uh, right now, I'm I'm doing Grubhub at the moment. Um, I did. I know. How are you ever going to come up with the money? How are you ever going to come up with the money for this? Is what I'm trying to tell you nicely. I mean, I want to be able to help you here, but you how are you going to come up with twelve, thirteen, thirteen thousand dollars? Well, my plan is to go in front of the other judge, my divorce lawyer, my divorce <laughs> judge, and ask them to have Kenneth. Help me pay this off, and also, like I said, I was the two thousand dollars I was getting from my um my check that I'm coming that's coming soon. I was going to give it all to them, and then paid the eight hundred dollars today, 
and I'm going through Wayne Metro to. Um, Here's what I'm doing. I don't want to belabor this. I'm going to go out of my way and adjourn this. I'm going to adjourn your motion to set aside default judgment. Ma'am, I'm just making a note here. Told her, and I'm telling you now, I'm likely to deny your motion. That being said, I'm going to let you figure out some way you to talk to a lawyer to come up with the money and go from there. I'm giving you three weeks. I'm adjourning it three weeks. That's three weeks from today, which should be on March the 6th, right, Linda? Yes. Yes, Your Honor, but that's your probation day. Oh, geez. You want to oh, go okay, to the 13th? Can't. No. No, I got a probation on my, what day? I don't even know my dockets anymore. What, what day do I have civil cases on? on uh, it won't be again till the 13th. That's your first, from today, that's your first civil well, I'm going to adjourn this to March the 6th at 8.30 in the morning. Ma'am, that's going to be it. You're going to have to figure this out quickly, please. I'm, I'm trying going to. on my way here. I thank you. Thank you so very, very much. Ma'am, listen, listen, you're not going to be thanking me in three weeks if you don't have the money and you haven't talked to Mr. Pallets or his office. That's it. Three weeks. That's it. And then I'm likely to deny your motion. So you better move quickly, quickly, quickly. OK, there's nothing else I can do. I'm sorry. Good luck to you. Thank you. Ms. Gupton, your name, ma'am? Hi, Lynette Gupton. Counsel, your appearance? For the record, may it please this honorable court, Matthew Pallets on behalf of the plaintiff. Ms. Gupton <clears throat> filed in a, a motion for <clears throat> to set aside the default judgment. Um, what would you like to tell me, ma'am? Um, Recently, I've applied for the My Half program. I spoke with Tracy um, from First Choice, and she said that they were registered through the My Half program, but um, the My Half program asked me to reach out to them, um, hopefully today, um, so they can register for payment um, through the My Half program. And I also just um, received more stable employment. Um, so... I'm just trying to still see if I can keep my place. What do you have to say, Ms. Pallas? Your Honor, this is a claim and delivery matter, as you know, and I would say for the record, I can see Mr. Gupton, the code defendant, is listed, and he is oh, present. I'm sorry. I apologize. Okay. He, he, has, he has not appeared pri previously, but he is here today. Um, uh, Your Honor. Mr. Gupton? Yeah. Hello, I'm sorry. I need your name, please. Yes, Kenneth Gupton. Did he? He was. Def was he defaulted previously, Mr. Pallets? Yes, Your Honor, he was. Um, this was Ms. Gupton's motion. If you recall, Your Honor, um, this is the second hearing on Ms. Gupton's motion. Um, so this is the second time we're here on this. The um, defendants, and we don't need to get into their their private business, but needless to say, they're estranged. I, I think either they're going through a divorce or the the divorce has been final. Um, it's my understanding there's, as I said, some estrangement uh, between them. Um, it's obviously impacted the financial stability of this account. Um, Your Honor, they owe well over $15,000. Uh, the last payment was made in May. It's my understanding that Mr. Gupton, through conversations with my office and with the my client, he's not interested in maintaining this obligation any further. I'm sympathetic to Ms. Gupton, and I also appreciate her diligent efforts to try and possibly secure fundings, but uh, my client is not registered with my half. They're not interested at this time of, of prolonging this. It just does not seem like Ms. Gupton on her own is going to be able to be have the financial wherewithal to continue this obligation. 
Um, Your Honor, I, there's no payments been made since May of 2022. As I said, we've gone through the default process. Ms. Gupton filed her motion. This is the second hearing on this. There's been no uh, demonstrable movement as far as trying to secure this financially. I'm sympathetic to Ms. Gupton. I understand she's trying to get some assistance, but uh, this was clearly a, an obligation that they both took on due to their <laughs> pending divorce proceedings. Doesn't appear that she's able to maintain it by herself. My client has, uh, you know, been very patient with this, Your Honor. Appreciate the process, but they're entitled to their asset back, and I would ask that our judgment stand and that we discuss a time frame for Ms. Gupton to vacate. Um, can I speak, please? I am I am currently now um, in a position to go ahead and uh, make payments. I have a more stable job now. Um, I was saying that I spoke with Tracy, um, your your client from um, First Choice, and she said that you guys are registered through my half program and that they received payments before from other clients. And I was just trying to, they, the, my half program just asked me to reach out to you guys so that you guys can receive payment from them and make sure you guys are registered through the my half program. And again, I do have more stable employment now. Uh, Your Honor, if I may quickly, um, Ms. Gupton, I, I, like I said, I, I'm sympathetic to you. I, I've spoken to Tracy and I've, I've spoken to my client. Um, you haven't been approved officially from my half. I understand you have to go through the process. Your Honor, as well, I, I'm sure familiar with my half. It, it, it can take weeks, if not months. Um, you know, Your Honor, unfortunately, this is just coming at, at this juncture is just it's just way too late in the process. Again, I'm sympathetic to Ms. Gupton, but my, my clients entitled their their chattel back. It, it's over fifteen thousand dollars. They, they have to have it back. Ma'am. Anything else? I understand what he's saying, um, but I really am trying to keep the house from my kids and myself. I, listen, I want you to be able to keep it, but they filed the action in July. You just told me you haven't paid since May. I can't find I, that there's good cause. I adjourn this an additional three weeks. You cannot find that there's good cause, nor does there appear to be a mer meritorious uh, defense of any kind. I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm going to deny your motion. Um, and counsel, you can proceed with, I had entered an order on February 6th saying there shall be no post judgment collection proceedings until court decides motion to set aside default judgment. So this effectively voids that order. So you may proceed. And your honor, I guess, um, I'll defer to the court if you want to, as your honor going to um, prepare an order, do you need us to do that? I'm going to ask you to prepare an order. That's fine. And then within that order, your honor, um, what would be an appropriate time for Ms. Gupton and all occupants to vacate? Ma'am, uh, you can, uh, let me just make a note here. Can I please speak? Ma'am, I've gone through this with you. I've made my decision. I really am sorry. It tears me apart to have to do this as it does on any type of case like this where somebody's losing their home. But at some point I have, to, let me finish please. At some point I have to be fair with them too. And frankly, this has gone on too long. Uh, defendant to vacate by March 31, 2023. Good luck to you, ma'am. I'm sorry. Thank you, Your Honor. 